this tutorial I will show you how to work with Odyssey Draft collaboratively. When working online, every team member needs the host address and server port, which should be provided by the server admin. After logging in, you see the project overview screen that lists all projects available for you. Here you can also see how many team members are currently working on which projects. Hover with the mouse pointer over a project to see more detailed information. Double click on a project to open it. When opening a project for the first time, you have to choose an empty folder on your hard drive that will serve as working copy directory. Next, you need to enter your Pairforce or Subversion credentials. Please ask your server admin if you don't have them at hand. Now that you're connected to the server and logged in, you see the connectivity status as well as the currently connected user and the server you're connected to in the ribbon bar at the top of the user interface. As long as the signal is green, the server connection is established. If you're disconnected from the server, it will become red. In brackets next to your username, you see your assigned role for this project, for example admin or team worker. Right next to the connectivity status, you see a list of the latest multi-user activities. This helps to keep track of who is currently working on which part of the project. But let's take a look at how collaborative working in Artisy Draft functions exactly. Collaborative working in Artisy Draft builds around the concept of partitions. So first of all it's important to know that a project is broken down into partitions. The actual structuring is up to you or the one who set up the project. If you want to know more about defining the partition structure, please take a look at the tutorial for project administrators. In this video we simply assume that someone has already taken care of the partitioning. Only one person can work on a partition at a time. This guarantees that no conflicts arise because two team members simultaneously edited the same data. Partition routes are marked with a colored circle. In this example we have a very basic partitioning with only a few subpartitions. As I said before, it's up to the project admin to further subdivide the project if necessary. Every element that is not a partition route shows an arrow instead of the circular icon. Hovering over the icon displays a tooltip telling you to which partition the element belongs and who currently owns this partition. To work on a partition you first have to lock it. Select the element you want to work on and click on update and lock. As you see the partition icon's color has changed from grey to green. Grey means that currently nobody has locked the partition. If somebody else locked a partition it shows a red icon instead. Now that you locked the partition you can work on it. As long as you don't publish your changes they are only stored locally and the rest of the team cannot see them. So click Publish to make your changes available to everyone on the team. Once you've finished your work on this partition, click on Publish and Unlock so that others are able to work on this partition. Remember, as long as you lock a partition, nobody else can work on it. So make sure to unlock all the partitions you don't need to work on anymore. If you see this exclamation mark on a partition icon, it means that one of your coworkers has published new content for this partition. To view it, simply select the partition and choose Update. Now you should know all you need about partitions and how to lock, update and publish them to work together on a project collaboratively.